So let's talk about Syria, shall we? Um, they won't really tell you the truth about what's happening in Syria. They never have. Um, and they're not going to anytime soon. Something unexpected, though, happened. Something shocking happened at the Pentagon yesterday. Something, frankly, we didn't see coming. We'll show you the videotape in a moment, and perhaps you'll be as stunned as we were. But first, some context on that shocking moment. And for that, I want to go back to a year, 2019. That's when something disgusting and disgraceful happened in Syria. Syria is a country that the United States and Western countries have been bombing for years under the guise of helping the Syrian people by ridding it of ISIS and other Islamic terrorists, right? That's what you do. We're going to help you, right? Instead, we've actually destroyed their country and killed tens of thousands of people. The best numbers that we actually have are one year old. So the, even these numbers are out of date. One year ago, let me pull up these numbers here. They come to us. These, these are from, these are United Nations numbers. Okay. These are, these numbers are one year old. 350,000 people dead. Okay. One year old numbers. Well, that happened in March of 20. Uh, well, what happened actually on March 18th, 2019 in Syria would have gone unnoticed by most of the world if it weren't for journalists actually doing their job. We only found out about it two years later when the New York Times actually broke the story. Yes, the New York Times. Shocking, I know. But the New York Times actually broke this story. Here it is. How the U.S. hid an airstrike that killed dozens of civilians in Syria. Turns out someone with a conscience at the Pentagon leaked the details of this story to the press because it was just a little too hor horrifying to hide any longer. So here's actually what happened in this story. Everyone in the room knew they were, there were women and children there at this bombing. So here is what happened. Um, U.S. military drone circled high overhead, hunting military targets in Syria. But it saw only a large crowd of women and children huddled against a riverbank. This is from the Times? This is from the New York Times. And then, here's the next paragraph. And then, like clockwork, uh, an American F-15 jet dropped a 500-pound bomb on the crowd. But that didn't do the job. So they dropped another 2,000-pound bomb on the crowd. But even that wasn't enough, so they dropped a third 2,000-pound bomb on these women and children. Well, mission accomplished. Suddenly, though, one of the analysts in the room said this. And this is in the New York Times. Who dropped that? Almost like as if, you know, like a child is in your kitchen and like dropped a glass. Like, who dropped that? This is a chat log. This is a chat log. It's like their Discord. Yeah, this is like a, a live chat recording, like while they're sitting there on their computers. Um, who dropped that? We just dropped on 50 women and children, the analyst says in the chat log. We later learned that, it, in fact, it wasn't 50 women and children, but instead it was 70 women and children. So, give or take 20. What's 20, what's 20 civilians among U.S. military? It doesn't really matter, right? These types of events happen all the time at the hands of the U.S. government, and they are kept hidden from the public so that you don't get upset about where your tax dollars are going. Adel al was lived. he lived in Yemen when a U.S. drone strike struck his uh, car. His truck, sorry. He was killed with his four cousins. He was driving along in Yemen. Four of his cousins were killed when the U.S. drone strike hit his truck. He now has no legs, and the doctors are telling him he might die unless he can get the help that he can't afford. So after these years, his legs have gone so bad they're getting gangrene, so he set up a GoFundMe account to help get help after being bombed by the U.S. military. Now, this happens all the time. Here's how we help Syria, by the way. This is if you want to know, like, hey, how do we help Syria? We're really helping them, right? Here's how we help Syria. Look at how beautiful that town is now. It's totally rebuilt, right? Look at that. We've done amazing work there. Look at that park. It's amazing what we do when we go into these countries and destroy Well, that them. road is perfect. Look how smooth it is. I mean, no potholes or anything. It looks like it's been plowed of debris. Yeah. This is what we like do. Like the snow plowers. So thank you to our U.S. military for destroying this country. But this incident was particularly harsh because it was so large. Now, according to the New York Times, everyone at the Defense Department knew it was civilians when it happened. Literally, from the moment it happened, there was no doubt. In fact, a lawyer, listen to this, a lawyer for the Defense Department flagged it as a war crime the moment it happened. Literally flagged it. You just get the heck out of here. No, I'm not, I'm not leaving. <laughs> That's literally what happened. They flagged it as a war crime. A lawyer for the Department of Defense. 
But then the Defense Department sprang into action and immediately began to cover it up. An Inspector General's report was delayed. And then when it was released, there was no mention of the bombing. Imagine that. Imagine doing a book report for school, right? Like your teacher assigns you, hey, Clayton, you're going to be writing up a, a, a book report on um, Brontosauruses, you know, the, the dinosaur. And then I turn in my report on Brontosauruses and there's no mention of a Brontosaurus. There's literally nothing about it. Nothing. How do you think I'm going to do well in that report? Like, that's literally what they did. Here's an assessment of this incident, and we don't even mention the bombing. Oh, but it's also like you grading that book report that you wrote. Yes, exactly. Right. Because I'm doing it with generals that are appointed to because oversee Because we're it. investigating ourselves here. Exactly. So, I mean, that always goes well. That's like when, you know, or when we get these reports like, uh, how healthy is soda? This study is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Oh, it turns out this sugar water is actually pretty good for you. Thank you, Coca-Cola, for giving us that fantastic uh, report. Yes. So the New York Times report actually prompted the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin. Good for him. He actually launched a new inquiry into the bombing. The Pentagon finally released the results, and they did that yesterday, uh, which said that mistakes were made in the original inquiry, but found no wrongdoing in the strike and did not call for disciplinary action. So bottom line, no one will be punished. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby dropped the report yesterday. Okay, this is, just watch this. This, I have a couple of sound bites to show you of John Kirby yesterday, because it was unbelievable. But this is how he walks out to the podium. He delivers the news about this report. You'll find it in your inbox. Uh, I would encourage you to read it. Give it a glance, literally. And then he moves on to the next topic. Just watch this moment unfold. Operations low intensity conflict is hard at work on getting uh, the work of that uh, civilian harm mitigation and response action plan done and, and getting his team in place. That work is ongoing. Uh, uh, switching topics uh, to suicide it, uh, obviously remains a challenging issue here. <laughs> Wait, what about? So, okay. Well, I didn't I... get any of that. It was just. Yeah. So um, let's watch it again. You want to see that again? Because this is literally, this is how he, he goes from talking about killing 70 women and children, but let's move on to suicide. Uh, in the department and, of course, across the country. Operations uh, low-intensity conflict is hard at work on getting uh, the work of that uh, civilian harm mitigation and response action plan done and, and getting his team in wait, place. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so just stop for a second. We're hard at work. Uh, uh, switching topics uh, to suicide. It, uh, obviously, Let's go on to something better here. <laughs> wait, he, the way he said it was so cold. It, it, su yeah. Civilian mitigation plan. It's a civilian mitigation plan. It, Oh, you mean we killed 70 people? Is that what you mean when you like, say a civil we're going to try not to do that? Yeah. We're going to really... We have a plan to stop doing that. Now, remember, just about three or four months ago, Lloyd Austin released a, like, sort of 10-step plan to stop killing civilians. What we're going to do about that, right? Which was, like, A... Be more transparent when it happens. B, try to be more careful. C, don't do that if you can avoid it, right? It was no, like, we're just going to stop killing civilians. It was like, when that happens, because it will happen again. Yeah, yeah and by the way, like, when we when we attack or, civilians or kill them or kill their family, we, hey, we killed four of your, your cousins here, but like this guy in Yemen, uh, and now you've lost your legs. We don't actually send you a check or anything, so the guy has to go on a GoFundMe page. Is that a part of the 10-point 10, 10 plan? Like when we kill your family and now your legs are gone, do we also send you a check for 50 bucks? Like mm. go, go get some legs. I guess that's not part of it. Sorry, Philip, go ahead. Oh, no, I was, I was just going to say, you know, it's like... Uh, with what Natalie is saying about that list, you know, it's like that 10 point list. We need George Carlin with this, like where he pared down the 10 commandments to just one commandment that basically don't be a dick. I mean, you can take <laughs> right. that whole list and just be like, yeah, don't do it. Yeah. Don't. Yes. That's our family motto, by the way. Don't yeah. be a dick. We Mine have t-shirts. Don't be a dick. Like you literally could live your life by that, right? Like, hey, are you going to are you going to not let this person merge in traffic because you're not moving anywhere? It's bumper to bumper traffic. Where are you going? Let the guy in. Don't be a dick. Like you could live your whole life like that, right? Mm -hmm. How about this? Don't bomb and kill people. Don't be well, a dick. Well, and it must have been it must have been a lot of like women and young children because what they tend to do um, is any child, a male that is I think it was it's either 11 or 13 years of age or older, they consider a military target. So that's how they got away with a lot of these because they would say, oh, no, there were seven targets in there, but they were 11-year-old or 13-year-old kids that were military age but weren't soldiers. Right. So these might – yeah. I mean we they weren't carrying guns. They were carrying baby bottles 
Uh, but, you know, hey, let's collateral damage. By the way, Madeleine Albright, who everyone celebrated her funeral recently, like what a great American. Uh, she literally said, eh, children, that's we're fine with that. You know what? As the price of war, we're OK with that. Like this is the great woman that we're holding up as Madeleine Albright. Anyway, there was more to happen here in this event because reporters didn't let John Herb Kirby off the hook so easily. Something actually amazing happened. They actually grilled the shit out of him. And this is just a few samplings of some of these reporters who are longtime Pentagon reporters, by the way, asking some actually tough questions. Jen. John, in terms of these reports, going back to the Bagu's report, how come nobody is ever punished when these reports come out? There's never any accountability. Jen, I think, uh, and you've been covering the Pentagon a long time, you know that we, we take leadership and accountability very seriously here. Um, uh, I'm not going to, I couldn't begin and wouldn't try to chronicle every single incident of civilian casualties over the past years in the example. What I can talk about here today is Bagus. And the reason why the secretary wanted a four-star who wasn't connected to the operation in any way to review it was to make sure that we got it right. Yeah. Yeah. Just think about that. So we assigned a four-star general because he has nothing to do with the Pentagon to review this. Now, yeah, he wasn't involved in actually saying, go ahead and pull the trigger, but he still works at the Pentagon right? He's a four-star general. That's like, I mean, asking, I, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an analogy here, but like, if your whole life is war, you've you spent your whole life studying war and how to execute war, and then you put a, a warmonger in charge of uh, going over this, that's probably not going to turn out fair and balanced. Right. Well, and four-star he... generals aren't very credible if they're going to be posting video game video, videos of <laughs> jets. Well, I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like having the Joker investigate the Penguin. You know, that's like, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, from the details we've discussed so far, right, it did seem like internally there was it, it was not black and white. It was a black move, right? Yeah. That people in the chat and a lawyer knew this is really bad stuff. So then what did this four star general not see? Right. That he was like, it's not so bad. So, mistakes, but it's okay. Yeah, and I want to get to some of like what what is the fallout from all of this in a second. But we hear one more soundbite because these are so good. There was a lot, but uh, but and he kept trying to change the subject. Like, look, you know, we got this thing in Russia. Can we talk about Russia? There was suicide. We want to we, talk, we'll talk about suicide. suicide. I want to go back to my favorite topic, which is suicide. Uh, so no, can we talk about Russia or suicide? How about not Syria? Uh, but no, reporters actually wanted to keep asking him about Syria. In that the women children are being killed yes you are coming up speaking to these issues in a transparent way but that doesn't change the fact that the united states military have killed dozens of kids and women why are you making a comparison with the russians and just trying to justify ho, the united ho, ho, states ho, ho. not trying to justify anything uh, not at all the difference is we're admitting that yes we killed some innocent civilians, women and children, in 2019 in Bagu, Syria. It's all out there for you to see. We're oh, is it? It's all out there for you to see. So why do you then make this a comparison to Russia? Like, oh, you know, these war crimes that Russia is carrying out, and don't mention anything about Zelensky or anything about Ukraine, of course. Uh, but here we are doing our own report. Um, they but didn't they, admit it. They admitted it when they were called out for it. So, okay, you don't get points for that. Yeah, you How only. How many years the only ago did that know, happen? <laughs> yeah, 2019. By the way, the only reason we know about it is because the New York Times got a hold of it, piecing conversations together and information from people who were in the room where it happened. That's the only reason we know about it. So to stop getting all high and mighty about this. Like, I love that. That we made those mistakes that we killed, uh, that our operations ended up in the killing of, uh, of innocent people. And we do it, and when we, when we, in other instances, have been able to prove that, we've been able to say that. Um, oh, yeah. um, uh, no. But I do think it's important uh, to note the difference here. And I, and I make no apologies for this. Here I am up here standing here reading out an, a, 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 the results of a review of an investigation of an incident that happened, what, three years ago uh, in, in Syria with as much detail as we can and with as much openness and transparency as we can. Sure, you're, so, you're full of shit. But when you're absolutely asked full of shit, by the way. For details, you gave no details. Right, so he said, he said, we quote, are holding ourselves accountable for letting you see everything. Now, did anybody get fired because of Bakus? No, but it's not because we're trying to protect careers, he said. 
General Garrett had a completely independent look at this strike. And that was our assessment. But at every turn, I mean, every turn, the Pentagon did what it could to conceal this deadly strike, wiped it from the record, and a proper investigation never actually happened. So they could have done it, but they didn't. General Garrett found actually that the ground force commander made the best decisions that he could, given the information he had at the time, given a very lethal and very aggressive ISIS threat in a very confined space, Kirby told reporters. So at the end of this, no one did anything wrong. It was just a mistake. No one's being punished. And sorry, we killed some women and children. That's what we do. That's what we do. I mean, it, okay, but this is, so now the United States is using these terms war crimes for other countries. Yeah, but he uh, wants to remind you that he's transparent in his war crimes only after being called out by the New York Times. Meanwhile, the United States is not a part of the war crimes tribunal for, because it may actually be held accountable for something like this very incident, right? Yeah. And so it would be nice. So the, those of us who feel really frustrated that there was no consequences and we don't feel like there was a proper investigation would love to appeal to a higher power, but there isn't one because the United States has not, not only not joined the war crime tribunal, but sanctioned members of the war crime tribunal when they even buzzed around any United States business, right? So right. We, so it's just super frustrating when you're like, I'm at the top of the food chain and I can't push any further, right? When you're like, I need to see your manager and they're like, we are the manager, right? You, this is how this feels. Well, well, I think it would, yeah, look at ahead. like Afghanistan, like that just recently happened where we killed what, 10, 10, seven or 10 people. And there's no account. Has anybody been held accountable for that? Like, that's just a recent thing. Like a lot of people saw that happen and they, no. they tried to excuse it away at first. And then they realized there, there was no excusing it away. And I'm sure nobody's paid for that. No, of course they don't. And they won't. And th this is the thing. And the only reason we even knew about that story is because journalists got a hold of it. How, for he's like, we, we're up here. Anytime we make this mistake, we're right here. We're right in front of you. No, you're not. How many things are you hiding? How many things are you uh, keeping from the American people? You're keeping a lot of it from the American people. And only as this is why they don't want journalists near there. This is why this is why they shoot journalists in the head. But it would be nice to hear like, OK, you say that to us. I don't feel good about you saying that. I haven't trusted you lot in a while, right? You didn't, you weren't forthcoming with this. It was leaked to the press and then you went out and admitted it and then did your own investigation. So will you join an international tribunal so that we can get an unbiased third party investigation? Let's do that then, yeah. right? Because you want to call for war crimes. You obviously believe in the system. Let's join it. Let's hold ourselves accountable. That's the only way right to to because otherwise who trusts this no no one does well, and what's crazy yeah. to me is like you have they want these fox and cnn embedded journalists like we've got embedded journalists and they're telling you what's going on in the war but you have people that are telling the real stories that are you know facing on kill lists and and yeah. you know facing like look at julian assange like anybody who pushes against that narrative that they want you to believe you know the real journalists like rt i consider rt a real journalism team because they are anytime you ever saw any controversy in the world you always saw those green microphones and they were right in the thick of it yeah yeah and i i know a lot of rt uh reporters now i've, I've talked to a lot of them uh and they do great work i mean and so I, we can go down that rabbit hole but it, the bottom line is like you're keeping information from the american people you're lying about it you're covering it up and uh, when pressed upon it, you're giving us a shitty you're giving us a shitty assessment of it. Yeah, like that's the bottom so line. So you can't be the end of the food chain anymore. We're gonna need somebody above you that we trust. Yeah, who's right? that gonna be? Let's get a five star general because that'll be better. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned, we've been blocked, we've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.